So let's dig into the full data sheet and the rules that Lionel Johnson can bring to the table. Now all his abilities are revealed, how strong is the Primarch of the Dark Angels? Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're reviewing a Primarch. Games Workshop have made the datasheet for Lionel Johnson public, available to download from Warhammer Community. So now that we know the full story for him, exactly what rules he can bring to the table, rather than just the teaser of rules that we had with his stat line previously. This datasheet probably won't have the longest shelf life in the world, with 10th edition on the way. He'll be getting a new and updated stat line then I suppose, in a couple of months time, but it's still pretty cool to see how powerful he is in 9th edition. I'd say my first initial take is probably that he hits very hard in combat, has some very interesting buffs, though is kind of surprisingly easy to kill. Let's go through his data sheets and rules in turn, and see just how powerful the Primarch of the Dark Angels really is. So Lionel Johnson is a 320 point Lord of War choice for Codex Dark Angels. There's really quite a lot going on on his data sheet. He's got a pistol, combat weapon, a bunch of different buffing abilities, and his own unique warlord trait, plus some psychic denial support from the Watchers in the Dark and the ability to fight first in combat. Breaking things down bit by bit, first up for how you'll be able to select him is that he's a Lord of War. That'll be kind of handy that he isn't competing with other HQ slots in the Space Marine Army. It can sometimes be an issue in Arcs of Omen, and if you're playing a game that isn't Arcs of Omen, then you'd be able to take him in his own Supreme Command detachment, so it's not going to cost you any command points there either. Otherwise, he does have a pretty similar stat line and keywords to his brother Gilliman. It does appear that he's also gained the monster keyword, unfortunately. That is a bit of a weakness for him, as it means that he has to go around terrain and things, and quite a lot of buffs from the Dark Angels Codex don't work on him, things that have to target infantry. Otherwise, though, he moves 8 inches, hits on 2s, strength and toughness 6, 9 wounds, 10 attacks, leadership 11, and a 2 plus save, generally fairly respectable. In terms of comparing those raw stats to Gilliman, the major changes are that he gets 10 attacks rather than Gilliman's 6, plus you'll also get shock assault as well. And he's got a better base leadership of 11 as well, though I guess Gilliman would get his chapter tactic to put it up to 11 on par. I'd say that perhaps one of his biggest weaknesses are his defensive abilities. Toughness 6 and 9 wounds at a 2 plus save aren't really too bad a start, that's what I would have guessed, as that means he'll be able to get character protection, so he'll not normally be able to be directly shot. But I feel like really quite a lot of people were kind of let down by the Emperor's shield rules. Just as a relic of the Emperor itself, you'd think it would probably be a god tier defensive relic, something that's going to be a massive boon to him and stopping him from dying. But weirdly enough, for some reason, the only defensive rule it has is giving him a 4 plus invul save. You don't get anything like minus 1 damage, 5 plus feel no pains. 3 plus invuls like Gilliman, or damage caps like Abaddon. It just seems kind of bizarre that alongside a lot of the other faction commander type models, he doesn't really get anything gamey to help him stay alive. And I feel like for a Primarch with the Emperor's own shield relic, he probably could have justified something a bit more weird or unusual, without the usual eye roll that comes when he gives something like a Bloodthirster a damage cap, for example. Unfortunately, he doesn't even get the inner circle permanent transhuman physiology type rule. He does have the keyword at the bottom of his datasheet there, but he's not an infantry model, so unlike the Deathwing, will be able to be wounded on twos from the highest strength weapons, whereas they can only be wounded on fours. Overall, for 320 points, this just adds up to him being remarkably easy to kill for that cost, at least by 9th edition 40k standards. In terms of his damage, though, it's a bit brighter. He does have a little pistol attack called Armor Luminous. Looks like this is a combi weapon bolt pistol type affair. It gets two bolt pistol shots with pistol 2, strength 4, AP minus 1 and damage 2. Not exactly the most exciting profile in the world, but might off a medium or elite infantry. And then it also gets a plasma shot as well, which you can fire both of them at once and it doesn't seem to give you any minus 1 to hit. He gets to overcharge that for no risk at strength 8, AP minus 4 and damage 2. So that's got quite a good chance of dealing at least some damage, I suppose. Not bad to have the option of just a little bit of extra damage, though I think I would be wary about using this if it's going to potentially make his charge longer. You really wouldn't want to just shoot one model dead and then just deny himself the catastrophic melee damage that he can unleash with fealty. Speaking of which, I feel like his combat stats are probably one of his bigger selling points. He does kind of feel a little bit like the recent Angron datasheet though, in terms of damage output, Maybe not all that much in terms of unusual unnatural abilities, but just a whole load of raw damage. First up he gets 10 attacks that with shock assault will usually be 11, and then when he's swinging fealty they'll usually be 11 attacks at strength 10, AP minus 5 and damage 4. Pretty excellent for dealing with heavies there. 
or he can choose to trade that out for a sweep attack, giving him a pretty massive 22 attacks at strength 6, AP minus 3, and damage 2. That's really going to absolutely butcher any enemy hordes or infantry. As if that weren't enough, his buffing rule, the Primarch of the First Legion, that one allows him to give Dark Angel's core or character units within 6 inches, reroll ones to hit and wound. That does include himself, so he's going to be rerolling ones to hit and to wound for his own melee attacks, the crazy amount of them that he gets. And then that does spit out some pretty staggering numbers against anything he's fighting. Against two wound or less infantry, he's going to kill a whole bunch of them. He averages 13 dead space marines. And against heavier things, particularly with no invuls, he's certainly no slouch either. Around about 33 wounds to a toughness 7 vehicle. Obviously though, that's going to start reducing fairly heftily if you have invul saves, or minus 1 damage, or something like that. To help him actually get those attacks before he goes down, he also has a rule called Martial Exemplar. This allows him to fight first if there's enemies with an engagement range. Fights first I think is a bit less powerful than handing out fights last to enemy units, but it's still useful. It means that if he's wound up in an ongoing combat, he shall get the jump on the enemy. If the enemy charges, it means that they'll be able to strike with their first unit somewhere on the battlefield, then the lion shall be able to strike next. And I guess if he does get debuffed with something like a fight's last ability, that would still mean that you could use the interrupt stratagem on him if it made sense. It is quite a nice rule to have, and it could also pair pretty nicely with heroic intervention too, jumping into combat and then potentially striking before the enemy provided they didn't charge. Finally, the Emperor's Shield might not give any extra defensive rules, but it can actually deal a bit of offence in combat when he's attacked. The law of it is that it reflects some damage with a big boom, and it means that each time Lionel Johnson makes an unmodified saving throw of a 6 in melee, the enemy takes 1 mortal wound to a maximum of 3 each phase. Honestly, I wouldn't say that that's all that impressive, but I guess a little bit of extra mortal wound damage isn't the worst to have. If he is being attacked by something powerful in combat, it's probably going to get at least a few of those. Still though, only saving on a 4 plus against anything quality and only having 9 wounds does mean that you still don't really want to be taking saves on him if you can avoid it. Overall though, I feel like his combat damage does stack up to his lore. He really is a pretty dangerous monster hunter. Finally, let's go through his other special rules. And first up, he has that one called Forest Walk, representing his new lore that he is somehow able to sort of walk through a shadowy forest within the warp from place to place. During deployment, you can set him up in reserves. He turns up as per normal, anywhere greater than 9 inches away, and when he turns up on that turn, he also gets to re-roll a charge roll as well, so he's got a bit more chance of it succeeding. Unfortunately, it's just not really great news for delivery all by itself. That still adds up to a less than 50% chance of succeeding that roll. And it does mean that if he's all by himself, then you're probably just going to eat a whole load of damage to the face as soon as it's the enemy turn. I feel like you just can't really be gambling a 50-50 charge roll on a coin flip for a unit that's 320 points. I think in general, I'd be more tempted to start on the board, though he would have the possibility to tag team with something like an interrogator chaplain, have the chaplain start on the board, cast the 2 plus to charge litany, and then deep strike the lion within his aura, and then get a 7 inch charge re-rolling to propel him into combat. That's far far more reliable, but obviously takes a fair bit more investment. I have a feeling that more people are going to start him on the board than deep strike him. Next up is re-roll buffs, which were already mentioned in passing. He allows core and character units within 6 inches to both re-roll ones to hit and to wound. It's basically kind of like a captain and lieutenant rolled into one, but affecting characters as well. It's a pretty solid buffing ability to be honest, usually going to equate to a plus 36% damage increase, really quite nice. It's pretty cool that the character thing allows it to infect himself as well, and it'd be pretty nice to have that with in the heart of a Dark Angel's battle line. I feel like it could be particularly interesting applies to Ravenwing Talon Masters, who usually can't get standard captain re-rolls and things. Seems like they could be a pretty good combo lurking behind the lines together. I did find it kind of interesting though that he doesn't have any chapter master style targeted re-rolls on top of this. Most of the other Primark level characters do have that. It could have been kind of helpful to throw on some Deathwing Terminators or something, particularly if units start to move different ways later in the turn when they're fighting in combat. It seems those attendant watches in the dark aren't just for looking good and carrying his stuff about. They also seem to give a couple of psychic denials, similar to the other Watchers in the Dark Angels Codex. Both of them have one use abilities to deny psychic power once per game. You get to re-roll against Chaos Psychers, as I guess they particularly don't like them. That's really quite nice added value, I think, on a character that's likely to going to be trying to keep safe. Though I guess if you've already got a few Deathwing squads, you might have at least a few psychic denials floating around. 
Finally, and I think perhaps one of the most interesting things about his datasheet is his warlord trait, which is a new one that's not in the Dark Angels Codex, and this one's called No Hiding from the Watchers. As per the other Primarch and Supreme Commander level characters, he's got to be the Warlord if there's no other similar level characters on the field. In Arcs of Omen, you don't necessarily need to buy in his Warlord trace, but I feel like this one is probably worth it, depending on what he's supporting. It's an interesting buff that's actually applied in the opposing player's movement phase, and you get to select one friendly Dark Angels unit within 9 inches. That unit can heroic intervene 6 inches later in the turn at the normal time. There doesn't appear to be any restrictions as to what you can target with that. He can use it on himself, or he could use it on a core or non-core unit. And if he's at the centre of a Deathwing formation, he could use that exactly where it's most needed. It's quite nice that you can target it after the enemy move phase, as it doesn't say what part of the enemy move phase it's used in. You could use it after all the opponent's units have been moved, but before the phase ends. That way you could react it perfectly to how the opponent's moved, so basically get perfect knowledge of where they've placed their units. Then you could just target it on the enemy unit that's within 6 inches if they've left one there. And even if they've been wary of this rule and known to back off at least 6 inches, it can certainly throw a spanner in the works. It might make it a bit harder to take objectives against Deathwing Terminators, not just putting a fragile obsec unit right next to them and spiriting the objective away. Overall this seems really quite nice, and provided it's got some Deathwing to use it on, I'd say it's probably worth the CP buy-in. Overall, I think it's a pretty interesting datasheet. Massive amounts of melee damage, particularly against things without imbols or things like standard space marines. And otherwise, for his abilities, I'd say perhaps the most important ones are the reroll ones to hit and wound, and maybe that warlord trait for heroic intervention. Forest walks just seems a bit questionable. The Emperor's shield isn't going to do a whole load, unfortunately. Fight's first is handy enough when it triggers, and psychic denials are nice to have. Combat damage seems good, but the durability does seem to be a bit of a letdown. Of course he isn't going to be fighting alone, certainly any core units will want to be nearby him to get rerolls and things, but there's a few things that can help out the lion himself. He could potentially receive the benefit of the Dark Angel's chapter tactic, he'd get a plus one to hit in melee in the enemy's turn, as you don't count as having moved in the opponent's turn, and that could counteract any negative modifiers he might face. Otherwise there are a few characters that synergize quite well with him, I feel like the rerolls to Talon Masters are pretty interesting. They're already a pretty efficient gun turret in the first place, and character protected behind things like Deathwing squads. Giving them reroll ones to hit and wound is just even more brutal. Several of the chaplain litanies could be pretty relevant for him, but the plus two to charges does seem very nice, either with Forest Walk or just getting him to melee on the board. A Librarian or Ezekiel could be kind of interesting for Righteous Repugnance from the Dark Angels tree. That would allow him full reroll wounds as well, which on such a devastating attack profile is pretty big. A pretty nice damage buff over and above the fairly spectacular numbers he has already. You could also give him Might of Heroes for plus one attack strength and toughness, or make enemies fight last with one of the other Dark Angels powers. Unfortunately, it does seem that he doesn't work with Apothecaries at the moment. Their abilities key off the infantry keyword, so it's not going to be monsters. Otherwise, feel no pains and healing some wounds could be handy enough. Dark Angels players do often quite like to have a Ravenwing Apothecary floating around. Finally for stratagems, perhaps not all that much works on him, perhaps just command rerolls for failed charges or failed saves might be some of the very best value you can get, but otherwise if he does get charged and killed before he gets to strike, then only in death does duty end is pretty handy for 2 CP, fighting on death and hopefully bringing down whatever else had the audacity to charge him. As he is going to be the warlord most of the time, one command point for tactical appraisal could be handy, as allows a bit of doctrine manipulation for Dark Angels units nearby. Putting that together for a rough game plan, first up, if you were maybe starting him on the board, then I'd be tempted to have him screened behind some big blocks of Deathwing Terminators, take a whole bunch of Thunderhammers and Storm Shields plus Cyclone Missile Launchers, and then they can use his rerolls, Heroic Intervention, and screen him from harm until he gets a charge himself. As above for supporting characters, alongside all the other good Dark Angels choices, things like a Talon Master or two seem pretty great, as does Ezekiel with the combat buffs that he can bring. Otherwise, if you did want the option of planning around Deep Strike for him against armies that made sense, again it seems pretty reasonable to have him alongside another Deathwing unit perhaps, then have a Chaplain start on the board with a plus two to charge litany, cast that and use either a jump pack or bike to zoom in where he's needed to go. The Lion and the Deathwing teleport down to make a nine inch charge from there, and with a plus two to charge that's a seven inch re-rolling for the Lion. 
It is really quite an expensive strategy, though, with the cost of the chaplain, plus maybe command points to also pass the litany if you want to. I'm not 100% sold, it's worth all the extra investment. When he's in combat, I feel like the game is going to be just to try and get the most damage output out of him before he gets killed. If he's on the front line, I feel like he's probably going to. I guess the game would be that after combat, try and have the combat four so he's screened by a friendly Deathwing nearby, or out of line of sight if at all possible. In general, I think he's going to be pretty potent against just about any combat threat, but perhaps particularly wants to be going after things like two wound infantry or big things without invuls if he has the option, and maybe not charging something that's going to be so powerful that he's going to fail to kill it and then get killed back in return in the enemy's turn. At least if they counter charge and kill you after, you could go down swinging with the 2 CP stratagem. I'd say for the cleverest thing he can do though, the heroic intervention trick could be really quite nice in the middle of a big formation. It's got the power to be very disruptive and make a Deathwing formation just massively more threatening and the enemy can't go anywhere near them unless they want to face Thunderhammers in combat. Overall, I think I'd rate him as a usable model in game, though maybe not stand out competitive within the Dark Angels. For strengths, I'd say he's got very decent melee damage, solid buffs between the rerolls and the heroic intervention warlord trait, and two psychic denials aren't bad to have. As for downsides, he's very easy to kill for 320 points when he's exposed. Similar level characters have far more durability than him, and delivering him into combat could be an issue as well. It's pretty slow and has the monster keyword, meaning that he'll need to go around things like ruin war terrains. Forest Walk just doesn't seem to be amazingly well executed for him, and either is going to be super unreliable or need Chaplain Litany investment to have a better chance of succeeding. I think perhaps his biggest challenge competitively though is just how many strong HQs and characters the Dark Angels have to choose from. Excellent characters like Ezekiel, Azrael, Talon Masters, Apothecaries, and Deathwing Banner Bearers. Just such a crazy amount of stuff that's very usable to support their other units already, and you might just be better off overall with two or three of the above, potentially handing out more useful buffs, even if they don't have the fairly god-tier melee damage. For that reason, I'd broadly say he's looking more like usable, but perhaps not standout. I feel like you could include him in a list if you build around him, and he's not going to hold you back too much, but I'd be kind of surprised if too many Dark Angels top tournament lists wind up winning with him, at least as things stand at the moment. Let me know your thoughts though, what do you make of Lionel Johnson, Primarch of the Dark Angels, are his stats powerful enough or not? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspecs Tactics, where I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming, I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, and you'd like to help support and keep them coming, I would just like to mention that Allspecs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.